Hey guys and welcome to World War II Solitaire Board Game Channel. Today we're gonna play USS Laffy, the unsinkable ship. Uh, a ship performing a picket duty in uh, World War II in the Pacific uh, that uh, withstood numerous kamikaze attacks. Uh, this game uh, has four difficulty levels and uh, we're gonna start with the ensign level variation. So in this video we're gonna play the easy mode and then of course we're gonna work ourselves up all the way to the captain level. But we're starting on ensign. So uh, basically there are, like I said, there are four levels. Uh, the ensign is the easiest one, then you get the lieutenant level variation. Uh, which is the most his historically uh, accurate version and then you have the commander level the third out of four which is like uh, the the base game basically uh, and how it's meant to be played and then you have the captain level of variation which is very very difficult and i don't think many people have actually uh, survived that level uh, from what i've read on on the forums okay guys so let's get uh, get the show on the road so the first thing you're gonna do on ensign level is you your supplies are gonna start on four, and the supplies are used to repair uh, things on the ship with your uh, damage control teams, and um, they're represented by these blue cubes, or you can use the blue minis from the Kickstarter. And anyhow, uh, they're used to repair or absorb damage on the different compartments of the ship. And we have uh, a total of 19, I believe, different compartments. Uh, the stern, the rudder, magazine and ammunition, propeller room, crew quarters, battle dressing station, crew quarters again, engine room, uh, aft fire room, fuel tanks, uh, let's see what I say, uh, forward fire room, radar, bridge, communications, crew quarters, magazine and ammunition, storage, crew quarters again, and the bow or bow. So these are all uh, different compartments of that ship uh, which can take damage and I can use my damage control teams there to get different benefits and the enemy can bomb those different compartments giving me uh, different kind of penalties. And we're gonna get into all of this uh, in the game so uh, just a brief quick explanation. These are all of the uh, kamikaze planes that we are gonna need to survive to complete the game. And these are the different uh, roles. Uh, and like I said, now it might seem confusing, but as we get going, you're gonna see how simple and nice this game is. So uh, let's stop babbling and let's start playing. And one last thing I wanna note before we start playing is that please remember that this is the easy variant of the game. Uh, it's a great level to start with and kind of get the feeling of the game, but you're gonna see that I'm gonna use very few of these, um, uh, these actions with my damage control teams because with the easy level you have, you have a much easier time. Uh, and uh, then, for example, I'm going to use the clear skies, and uh, I can't remember what the captain ability is. Uh, we have the clear skies over here. Uh, and I'm just going to repeat that, but once you go into uh, a more difficult level of the game, you're going to have to diversify, and you're going to have to use the other ones. So please don't judge the game uh, from this uh, one video, because if you're going to judge the game from one video, you're going to want to watch uh, the commander level playthrough. And that is coming as well uh, in a few days. Okay, so that's that's finally enough of my babbling and we're gonna get going. So the first thing you do, like you can see the turn order here, there is a total of six uh, things you do in every turn and in phase one we assign our damage control teams, we have two of those. So first thing we're gonna do is assign one damage control team to our rudder and that gives us a positive action and that positive action is marking out two stars on the clear skies and we have bridge actions supplies clear skies and fm2 wildcats and these can be used uh, for our benefit the supplies is just going to give us a supply meaning we can repair and absorb more the clear skies is going to give us a turn without the japanese attack and the fm2 wildcat is going to eliminate one of those kamikaze plays so those are our bridge actions 
Uh, and of course you have to mark out all of the stars. So for, for example, for the clear skies, uh, the first one we need to mark off three stars. We have currently marked off two of the stars by using this uh, rudder. And then we have one more and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on uh, the bridge, which lets us lock one of our dice to a one, which is a bridge action. And how that works, we're gonna go through when we come to phase number four, which is resolve. Uh, and that, my friends, it's uh, the end of phase one, assign damage control teams. We are now gonna go to uh, aircraft attack. Okay, so this works a little bit different depending on what uh, version you're playing, but with the ensign and lieutenant level variant, you're gonna always start on the first plane. Uh, and that's gonna be this one in the upper left corner. And then you're just gonna move clockwise. Uh, but if you play the commander level or the captain level, you're gonna roll a D10, uh, I believe, to see which is gonna be the first plane. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult that way. But we're playing the ensign level now, so we are gonna roll the uh, red D10. <clears throat> and the, the Japanese plane is facing the left side, so it's gonna attack on the left um, pad. And it's gonna attack compartment number four. And then we have uh, this red cube to remember uh, where it attacked. And compartment number four is crew quarters. And we can see that the penalty over here is roll one less dice. And we can find all of these. Uh, there, there is a chart on the back of the um, uh, back of the rules, if you forget, but you're gonna learn these quickly. But you see, we got this one, roll one fewer die during phase three. So that's, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, uh, meaning I will lose one of these yellow ones and I'm actually I'm gonna put it away because otherwise I'm gonna forget it and I'm gonna roll it anyway <laughs> okay and then it's time to deal out the damage that this guy is doing so his first damage is a fire and the second one is uh, a leak so the way this works is I'm gonna have to place these two out in the uh, attacked compartment and one adjacent compartment of my choice. And I get to choose where to put the fire and where to put the leak. So for example, I, I'm not uh, forced to put the fire, the first one in the uh, targeted compartment. I could put that in one of the adjacent ones. So uh, I'm gonna choose which adjacent one uh, to use and I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, the engine room. So uh, the leak, because uh, le leaks will go down uh, and fires will go up, I'm gonna wanna put my leaks up here and the fire down here. Because uh, when you go to spreading the leak and spreading the fire, if the fire has nowhere to go, it's gonna explode and there's gonna be one damage in every adjacent compartment. And with the leak, uh, if it has nowhere to go, uh, uh, going down, it's gonna spread to both adjacent compartments. So uh, I hope you are getting what I'm talking about, but you're gonna see. So first of all, we have the fire and we're putting the fire in the engine room and we are doing a red circle to remember that's a fire. And once we have done that, we're gonna go ahead and mark off that fire. Uh, and then we have a leak and the leak we're gonna put in the crew quarters, which is the uh, targeted compartment and we are doing a blue square to indicate uh, the leak Okay, so then it's time for a uh, phase number uh, three, which is rolling the dice it Says here uh, phase one two two four five six. I've never seen that before, but yeah, that should say phase three planning so uh, number two is good, right? Because number two is a hose and that lets me put out that fire. But number nine, that's more fires. And number eight, that's additional leaks. Luckily, I get to reroll these uh, yellow dice two times. So we have a one, which is a bridge action. <clears throat> and we have a four, which is AA. Uh, okay, so let's go through the bridge action. So what do these do? The ones, I can uh, choose uh, to use them in two ways. The first way is to mark off stars um, on, on the pad. The second way is I can convert them to any other die. So they are very useful. 
So we still have a 9 here of fire. I don't want that. So I'm going to hope for a better result. Last reroll. And unfortunately, no. So we get a fire. Uh, let's see what we want to do. Uh, we are going to want to... Uh, put out that leak and we already have that on the fire and then we are going to want to go ahead and use some more AA so you are going to sort these out uh, from lowest to highest so you can for example start with the fire and then put it out with the, with the hose unfortunately so the first uh, thing we have is the hose we're going to go ahead now and repair the fire in the engine room so the way you do that is you mark that with, uh, I, I, I like to do it with black color, you just fill in the circle. Because as you repair the fire, it doesn't, it's not repaired technically, the fire is inactive, it's uh, taken out, but there still remains debris. And the way you lose this game is either by losing your bridge, by filling out all of these circles or bubbles, or uh, having two compartments anywhere on the ship that are uh, completely filled in. So uh, we've used our hose, then we have a wrench and we're going to go ahead and repair our crew quarters or repair the leak. Then we have some beautiful AA and we're going to use that. <clears throat> the AA, you have di two different kinds, you have uh, normal AA and then you have the 5 inch gun. The normal AA just fires at the next uh, coming plane, but the 5 inch gun you can target any of these. But we have the normal AA, so we're gonna cross off two of uh, those attacks, so it only has a remaining uh, leak attack, so that's cool. But then unfortunately we rolled a 9, that's very bad. Uh, with the 9 you have to put the fire in the targeted, um, targeted uh, compartment or uh, an adjacent one uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the same and start the fire in the engine room uh, it just has to be an adjacent one it doesn't have to be any of the two which are damaged during the actual attack uh, and I'm gonna go ahead anyway and put it in the engine room as I don't want it to go somewhere where it's going to be uh, problematic to uh, repair. Uh, and then <clears throat> we have uh, phase number five, which is spreading your leaks. Uh, but we don't have any active leaks, so we skip phase number five and we go to phase number six, which is fire spreads. So one active fire anywhere on your ship spreads to a compartment above it. If there is no compartment above it, it becomes an explosion. Uh, but the fire is uh, spreading up and we're going to go ahead and spread it to the battle dressing station. So we now, now have two active fires uh, going on on our ship. And that's the end of the round. Uh, and uh, for the end of the game we need to survive all of these planes. So uh, one thing to note is that uh, being here at the bridge, locking one of the die to a 1, you can only do that uh, every second turn because you can never stay there for two turns. So I'm just going to put one of my minis here to make me remember that I've used the bridge action or the bridge um, this this uh, I, I, I occupied the bridge last turn and I can't do that this turn so my friends that is the end of this turn and we are gonna go ho go ahead and move now to um, turn number two so let's see collecting my dice and now I need to decide where to go I'm gonna go with the uh, clear skies action again uh, which lets me mark up the clear skies to stars and the way it works now you can see I've got a whole a cell here filled uh, and the way it works is the next time I roll the red d10 I will put it over here lock it to remember that the next turn I won't be rolling uh, rolling for the Japanese I will just clear uh, clear that cell which has been used then I have a second one <clears throat> and the second one I could I cannot use the bridge action. I want to put out these fires. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on uh, the engine room. 
which lets me put out a fire anywhere on the ship and I'm gonna go ahead and put out the fire in the battle dressing station. Okay, so that's it for that turn. We're gonna move ahead now. Um, sorry for that face. And we're gonna go ahead and roll for the Japanese. And you can see the Japanese this time, uh, the plane is facing the right side, meaning it's gonna uh, bomb this part of the ship. And it only has one leak damage. And it targets uh, compartment number eight, which is the forward fire room. That's not very good for me because that means all uh, the, the penalty is all rolls of six, which is usually a glance, nothing happens, will be a fire. So let's hope uh, I don't get any sixes this turn. Uh, okay, so it only has one, uh, which is uh, a leak, and the leak is gonna go right into this compartment. So the way it works, if it has uneven numbers of pips to deal out, uh, the targeted compartment has to be the one getting the most ones. So for example, if there would have been three hits, I would put two of them in the forward compartment and one of them in one of the adjacent compartments. Okay, so uh, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and mark up that kind of cast plane. So we have now finished two, two of the attacks. Two of the planes are done. And uh, clear skies, I'm gonna go ahead and put the red die there to remember next turn we're not gonna have a Japanese attack. And we're gonna go ahead to phase number three which is planning and roll our uh, d10. And hope for no sixes. Let's see, uh, number two is good. Uh, all of them are crap. Okay, so all of these are bad for me. Uh, you know, there's zero is an explosion, nine is a fire, eight to seven is leaks, and number six is, like I told you, in this uh, in this specific turn, it's a fire. So let's reroll. Uh, I'm gonna reroll that one because it's it's uh, very strangely sitting. There we go. But the four and the eight uh, stand as they are. I'm gonna save the AA. This was re-rolling due to malfunction, but of course it's a six. So we get a less, last chance here to re-roll these. Come on. Oh. Okay, so we have a hose. Nine and a seven. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we go to phase four, which is result. We have two hoses. So uh, we are only going to use one of them in the engine room here to clear out that fire. Uh, we have two AA, uh, we're gonna use those to fire on the next coming plane. Then we have a leak, and let's see, where do we wanna put the leak? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the leak over here in the crew quarters. And then we have a fire. Hmm. And we're gonna go ahead and put the fire in the fuel tanks. And that's it. So we go to next phase, which is uh, leak spread. So one active leak anywhere on your ship spreads to a compartment below it. If there is no compartment below it, it spreads to the compartment for and after it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and spread the leak of the crew quarters. And then we have a fire which spreads and unfortunately we have a fire over here. So the fire is gonna go ahead and spread up. And that's it. So that's it for this turn, end of the round. We go now to turn uh, number three. So remember this time we don't have this uh, bugger to care about, so that's cool. Uh, but I'm feeling like maybe <clears throat> I need to start repairing this. It's gonna be quite problematic otherwise. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mark up. Oh, I'm gonna wait for that. Okay, I'm gonna lock one of my D10 to a 1. And then I'm gonna go ahead and see what I want to do. I could, you know, uh, place it here and repair. 
I think actually that is uh, what I'm gonna do. Would be good to place it over here and repair these two damages. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my um, my damage control team over here in the fuel tanks, and I'm gonna spend one of my supplies. So I go from four supplies to three supplies, and I'm gonna go ahead and repair all of these. So all of them are repaired, and remember they don't go away. They are just repaired, so they are now debris instead of active fire and active leaks. And then the bridge action, or sorry, the, the action, the compartment action of this place is the hose, which lets me put out the fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and put out the fire in the crew quarters. Okay, so things are starting to look a little bit better, but uh, still not out of the danger zone. We're gonna go ahead <clears throat> and go to the next uh, phase, which is phase number two, aircraft attack. And remember, we used our clear skies, so that's why we have the red D10. We remove that and we mark off our cell here, showing that we've used the clear skies action. So that leads us to the next part, which is uh, planning. We get to roll our D10. And the perfect thing here is that the nines and the eights and the sevens, they don't hurt us in this, um, in this time because um, <clears throat> they, they are only active, sorry. They're only active uh, when you have an aircraft attack. So if you roll a seven, eight or a nine during a turn where you have the clear skies, they don't do anything. So we're gonna use our five inch gun for the first time and we have two beautiful bridge actions. The only thing that can hurt us is that bugger over there, the, the zero. So that's not something that we uh, want. Uh, we don't want a four and you know why we don't want a four, the AA? Because the next attack only has one pip of damage and that damage is a normal damage. So we can deal with that. Uh, so we don't want to destroy him and then face the next guy which has three attacks and those are at normal damage. Those are two leaks and one fire. So let's reroll. And I actually forgot how many um, <clears throat> I forgot how many times I rolled, but that's okay. We are gonna end here. Okay. So let's go to our resolve, phase number four. So we have three uh, bridge action icons and we're gonna go ahead and use one of them uh, and turn them into a wrench because we wanna fix these active leaks. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead, yep, I'm gonna use these and turn them into uh, five inch guns. So for the wrench, uh, we're gonna go ahead and repair this and this leak. Nice to get rid of those. And then we have the five inch gun and <clears throat> the five inch gun works. Uh, you have to attack any plane you want, but you have to divide the attack uh, between two planes. So for example, if I would attack these two here, uh, there, one of them would have to take two hits and the other one, one hit. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and target this guy. So the first attack hits him. The second one hits this guy and the next attack hits him. So you see I'm marking off pips as I go. One thing to note, there are two planes, this one and this one, they're called something like Katya planes or something, like KT planes I think, or Kate planes. And they are immune to the five inch gun. You might not be able to see it, I can barely see it, but here there is a small icon with a five uh, and, and a cross over it. Okay, so that my friends, uh, we have the leak over here, but like I said, 7, 8 and 9, they don't hurt you uh, if, if you have a, a um, turn with the clear skies active. So that's the end of the turn, we now go to the next turn. Remember I put this over here because you have to remember you cannot use the bridge action uh, two times in a row, or two turns in a row that is. <clears throat> All right, so we have uh, to assign our damage control teams and I am gonna want to use the this one is a cool one I think because this one lets me use the red die and then I'm gonna use this one x2 which is again clearing out uh, two of the stars on the clear skies perfect and that leads me now to rolling uh, aircraft attack and it's facing the left 
So it's gonna attack uh, on this part of the plane. Compartment number four, which is crew quarters. Uh, the penalty over here is one less D10, so I'm gonna take away, uh, away one of my D10s just to remember that. And let's see, uh, just one pip of damage, normal damage, nothing to worry about. And that's it. You might also have noticed last turn that we didn't do phase 5 uh, leak spreads or phase 6 fire spreads. And that's because we didn't have any active fires or active leaks. Forgot to mention that, but I remembered. And that's, that's the end of the uh, Japanese attack. And look at that, we have a nuclear sky. So we're gonna go ahead and lock our uh, red D10 over here. Okay, so next uh, part is planning. We're gonna roll our D10. And we have some pretty decent rolls here. Uh, I mean, they're not at least they're not doing something bad to us. So I'm gonna be okay with them. They're, they don't help us, but they don't do anything bad to us. So we have a seer, which is an explosive. Definitely don't want that. I definitely don't want leak. Ooh, so we got AA. Okay. So the hose is not going to help us, we don't have an active fire. The wrenches aren't going to help us, we don't have an active leak. But the AA, we have to resolve it and the AA is going to go ahead and target the next plane. The next plane only has one pip remaining. We target off that and I'm actually going to cross this plane out, indicating that I've successfully shot him down. And then we have a glancing blow and what that does is nothing. It doesn't help us, it doesn't do anything bad against us. Uh, next, <clears throat> next phases is uh, phase 5, le uh, leak spreads, again, no active leaks, ignore. Uh, phase 6, fire spreads, no active fires, we ignore it. End of the round. If no more enemy aircraft exist in phase 2, you win, otherwise repeat phases 1 to 6. So, we go to the next uh, turn and we go again to assigning uh, our damage control teams. And... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep using this. I like it. Um, and actually, yeah, I had one on the uh, D10, so I'm actually gonna get to roll this one. I forgot about that action. And I got a three, I'm gonna re-roll it. I got a one, so I got a bridge action. Uh, I'm gonna turn that into AA and mark off the explosion over there. Uh, and that's that's the way uh, that works. So I just forgot I used that, and that's why I hope you are getting what I'm doing. So anyway, so uh, let's assign. I'm gonna do the clear skies. I'm not gonna use that. I think that is better to save uh, for when you have an active uh, aircraft attack. So I'm gonna use the uh, red uh, D10 again. I like that one. The the red D10 is actually pretty cool uh, because uh, it ignores. Um, uh, the resolve 9 to 10. So it's a pretty cool thing. So basically it's better than your die because it, it can cause the leaks but it cannot cause a fire or an explosion. So it's a very good one to roll. But again, uh, during the during the uh, clear skies turn, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, you can still get an explosion but you can't get the fire. But it's still better than your uh, die. Is, since you have the el elimination of the explosion which can occur with the yellow ones okay uh, so did we mark off nope we didn't but okay so we're gonna lock the uh, we're gonna use the red d10 again and then we're gonna mark off two stars on the clear skies here there we go so now it's phase number two aircraft attack but we have used clear skies so we don't have to worry about that and to indicate that we've done that, we're going to mark off one of the cells here. Uh, and that leads us to our planning. We get to roll our dice. And remember now, uh, I forgot last turn, but we put that guy over there so we get to uh, use this one. Okay, so those are definitely some nice rolls. Four, two ones. We're gonna save those. Uh, let's see, we have no active. Nope, we're gonna reroll these guys. Saving the AA and rerolling again. Oh, 
Because uh, they don't help us, but they don't hurt us. We could still get uh, the zeros, which aren't very nice. Okay, so we have the bridge actions here. We're gonna go ahead and use these to um, convert them. The question is, do we want to use them to convert them into um, a A or five inch gun? I'm gonna go ahead and use the five inch gun. <clears throat> okay, so the hose and the wrench rolls are ignored. Uh, a A is gonna go ahead and shoot. So one, two, marking off this one as destroyed. Then we use our five inch gun. So one hit on that one and one hit on a, an adjacent uh, plane. And that is the end of that turn. We go now to the next turn. Okay, so we assign our uh, teams. We're gonna go ahead and lock one of our dice to a bridge action. And we're using again the clear skies. So marking off two of these. And then we have aircraft attack. This time we have an aircraft facing the right side and it has an explosion. And it's gonna target uh, compartment number eight, which is the forward fire room. Uh, that is <clears throat> definitely the worst place uh, and, and the aft fire room because, uh, again, it turns your uh, rolls of six into a fire. So they can be quite devastating. Uh, okay, so we have an explosion. So the way explosions work is, first of all, they cause a debris in the targeted uh, compartment. And then they cause a debris in every adjacent one. So you can see here, damage is racking up. And the fuel tanks and crew quarters are in bad shape. And remember, if you have two compartments fully damaged or the bridge fully damaged, you lose. Okay, so that's the end of the turn. We're gonna go ahead and put that there since we have the clear skies for the next turn. And we're gonna go ahead and, oh yeah, mark off the explosion, indicating <clears throat> we use that plane. Uh, let's see, uh, I get all the dice. Yep. Okay, so not a very good roll, to be honest. Uh, two and a three. Uh, we're gonna re-roll the explosion once, go for something better. Ugh. Okay, so at least it didn't uh, do anything bad to us. We're gonna go ahead and use these ones. Let's see what we wanna do. We're gonna turn them into normal AA. Okay, so the hose and the wrench don't do anything, uh, but we have AA, which we're gonna use, and we are gonna go ahead, we have three shots, so one, two, and he's dead, uh, three. So that's very cool. Uh, resulted in a nice thing. And again, uh, phase five and six is ignored since we have no active fires or active leaks on our ship. Okay, so next turn. Let's remove these, put one of these guys here to remember that we can't use it again. And we use the clear skies, of course, it's my favorite. And we use the red D10. Okay, so uh, we remove this, indicating we're not going to use uh, an airplane attack. And we mark out one of our cells. Okay, so what we're looking for here are fives, uh, fours, unfortunately no fours, and ones, because we want to attack the next coming planes. Oh, we have a five. Uh, we definitely don't want uh, zeros in this turn. Uh, four. Last reroll. No zeros, please. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Four fives. Okay. So, we have a one, and we're gonna go ahead and turn that into. Oh, let's see what I wanna do. How many pips do we have over here? Uh, we could. I'm gonna turn that into a five. Okay, so the AA uh, takes down 
the next coming plane. So we have one more. That's four planes shot down. That's pretty good. And then we have five five inch guns. So we're gonna go ahead and fire on. We start firing on this one. So that's one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits, five hits. So that guy is gone too. And the next guy coming only has a normal uh, normal debris attack, so no explosion or anything like that. And uh, we have a 9, which is a fire, but rem remember 7, 8, 9 is ignored uh, in the clear skies turns when there are no active attacks. Okay, so we go to the next turn. And you guessed right, we're going to use the clear skies again, we're going to use the bridge action of locking one of our d10 to a one that's a perfect way to play defensively because i can use that one to uh, take away an um, explosion or sorry uh, a fire or a leak uh, changing it into a hose or wrench so we're gonna go ahead and mark up two of these clear skies once okay so the next attack is gonna be on the left side and it's gonna be just a normal attack and it's a four man it's targeting the same area all the time and the four locks one of my dice so i can't use that one doesn't lock it i have to uh, remove one of them from my pool okay and it's just a normal damage to the crew quarters so that's cool with me uh let's see there we go and it's our turn let's see so i don't get to roll the red one and i lose one of the yellow ones so i have four to roll and i have a locked one to the uh, bridge and yeah i should also lock this one over here okay so pretty good we have a five and we have a four definitely don't want these <clears throat> and we have a two and another four so that's a very good i think uh, roll as long as you don't get these but you know it's a almost a 50 percent chance to get these buggers okay so we have a bridge uh, we want to turn that into a five inch gun uh, the hose is not needed so um the aa shoots two times so the aa has been used then we have the five inch gun and let's see we want to target we want to target the next coming planes with the five inch gun so two hits and that's the end of that turn we have no active leaks or active fires so we we'll remove these fellas uh, and we put one of these guys here to remember that we have used uh, our um, bridge action and we go to next turn okay <clears throat> so clear skies again of course using the red die you can see like i said in the beginning of the video marking off two of the stars here uh, is that i do use the same actions over and over again but as you progress through the difficulty levels of this game you are gonna have to diversify you're gonna have to lock your two fives you're gonna have to put out fires and repair leaks and you are gonna go and get uh, supplies because the supplies is gonna run out so you're gonna go ahead and get some supplies over here so because i have heard people saying that the clear skies is overpowered and so on uh, indeed it's a very powerful action to take but uh, again as you progress through the difficulty levels it's going to be less and less rewarding using that okay so, uh, so that's it we are going to go ahead there's no aircraft attack so we are removing the red dice uh, or die and we are marking off a clear attack a clear skies cell indicating we've used that and we're going to go ahead and roll our dice <laughs> Okay, so we have a one, that's good, and we have a four. I think I'm gonna re-roll that one because that's not anywhere. Uh, uh, it's, it wouldn't have been anything good. It would have been an eight or a zero, and that's not something I want, so I'm not gonna... I'm gonna count it as legal. Okay, uh, a one. Remember, the only thing we don't want here are zeros, so... Uh, it's a little bit of a um, chance now or a risk 
Yep, we didn't get any zeros. Very good. Fives and a one again. Okay, and the eight and the uh, seven is going to be ignored. Okay, so first of all, our bridge icons. You can also use this, like I said, to mark off stars. You're going to do that a lot in the greater difficulty levels because that's going to be your uh, good way to get supplies. Uh, all right, uh, let's see, AA. Okay, I want to use one of these guys for AA. And the rest of them I'm going to use for the 5-inch gun. Okay, okay, so the AA takes down the next plane and does one damage to the one coming after it. Then I have a 5-inch gun and I'm gonna go ahead and use that on these guys. Three hits. So that's it for this turn. Uh, let's see what I want to do. Removing these. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and lock one of my ones again. And do the clear skies thing again. And next plane attacking is attacking on the right side with a normal debris damage. Uh, attacking number zero, which is gonna be, let's see, uh, the fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks, that's horrible because um, that basically means um, if I roll a zero uh, or a ten on the right or the left, it's always going to the fuel tank. So I don't like getting that hit. Another hor or horrible thing with the fuel tanks is that the penalty is forcing you to lock one of my D10s to a ten before phase three, which, you know, is an explosion. Uh, not good at all. Okay, so we have an explosion, but that's going to be dealt afterwards, and I've dealt uh, the normal damage to the fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks are in trouble now, marking off uh, the hit, uh, and we go to our planning phase. So we hope for some good rolls. We really don't want crappy rolls now. And nines and sevens are definitely considered crappy. We get a 1 and 2 freeze. We're going to be happy with that. I don't want to push my luck when I have an aircraft attacking. Because again, getting a 7, 8, 9 can be devastating. So we have the bridge action. We're going to go ahead and turn that into the 5 inch gun. The hose is ignored. The wrench is ignored. The 5 inch gun. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and attack uh, these adjacent planes. And the explosion is going to happen. So the explosion, you know how it happens. It puts one debris in the targeted compartment and then one debris in every adjacent one. So we have three adjacent one. We have the fire after fire room. We have the crew quarters and we have the forward fire room. Another thing to note that I haven't told you, but if you have a damage control team in a compartment that gets bombed and that happens regularly it's very lucky that it haven't happened but when that happens that damage control team has to go uh, to the battle fee uh, dressing station and has to stay there for uh, the next turn basically you can't use it or uh, draw any of the benefits from it okay so that's it uh, let's see we have no active uh, leaks or fires, so it's the end of the turn. And we put that blue man over there. To remember that we can't use him. Putting out our damage control teams. We're going to use uh, the red die. You know I love that one. And well, we're going to go ahead and keep using the clear skies until we come here. Because after that I don't think it's worth it. Uh, let's see. So we're marking off two of those and we skip the the plane attack and we mark off a clear skies on our pad and we go ahead and roll all of these guys. Yeah, looks looks good. Five, one, one and I'm going to go ahead and re-roll this one because it would be either a nine or a one. And that's the bad thing with this dice tower that it's like uh, not really always definitely rolls. 
And it's a one, look at that. So, we have two re-rolls. Uh, we don't want threes or zero. Last re-roll. Oh, no! Okay, so the AA is cool, the six, it doesn't matter. But a zero, that's not what we want. But we got it. Okay, so the ones, we're gonna go ahead and turn them into... Uh, two of them are gonna go ahead and turn into normal AA, and one of them, five inch gun. So the AA, we have three hits to deal. So the next one is going on this guy. So he's taken out. And next one is going on this guy. So he's also taken out. Uh, and that needs the last hit to this guy. Then we have five inch gun. So we're going to target that guy and that guy. So the first hit is on him. And the second hit on that one. So... We have a glance, does nothing, it's a glancing blow, but unfortunately we have an explosion. The only good thing with the explosion is that it lets us put it anywhere uh, on the ship, uh, at least uh, as long as it's a damaged compartment. So unfortunately now we don't have a compartment number one on any side because that's good to have an explosion, that's the least uh, bad place anyway. Uh, so where are we gonna go ahead and place our explosion? We definitely don't want to place it in 5, 9, 6, 10 or 8 because the fuel tanks is blown up. So I think we're actually gonna go ahead and put it in the crew quarters. Looks like that could be the best place. One, two, has three uh, adjacent compartments. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. So the explosion goes to the crew quarters. And spreads to the magazine and ammunition. Also spreads to the battle dressing station. And to the engine room. Okay, so that's the end of the turn. And we now go to a new turn. And we're going to go ahead, you know the deal. going to lock a D10 to a 1. And we're going to mark off some stars on the clear skies two stars marked off and we're gonna go ahead and attack and it's attacking on the left side with an explosion Ooh. and it's oh man that is lucky it, it uh, attacks on one which is the stern so it only has one place to explode to which is the rudder and let's see the stern has a leak penalty so that means I gotta put uh, start a leak in the targeted compartment or any adjacent co uh, compartment where there are no damage control teams. But I have a two here, so that means I have to place that in the stern. And we're gonna go ahead and mark off that uh, explosion. How many planes are we taking down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have taken down eight planes and we have sustained attacks from one, two, three, four, five, six, eight planes. That's pretty badass. Okay guys, so uh, we have to uh, roll our dice now and we have to stay away from, uh, away from those seven, eight, nines and zeros. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. I could have used, uh, I believe, my uh, damage control team here in the rudder to prevent that explosion damage, but uh, one supply for one damage point is not a very good deal, I think. So, anyway. A lot of twos. A five. I don't need twos, I need uh, threes. A six and an eight. Definitely don't want an eight. Definitely don't want a zero. And it's another two. Okay, so the bridge we are turning into a wrench this time. The hoses, three of them, are ignored. Uh, the wrench we're fixing. The only active leak on the ship. Actually, the only active damage on the whole ship. Uh, the five inch gun. We're gonna go ahead and target uh, the next coming plane. Bam. And the glance, nothing happens. So we collect our things here from the board and we go ahead and start the next turn. So for the next turn we do the clear skies again and we do the roll red d10. We mark off two stars here and for phase two aircraft attack we 
are doing no attack and we are marking off the clear skies. And we also get to use the red d10. Okay, so the four is pretty good. Well, get nothing, no five, no one. Oh. I need to start taking out the next coming flames. Whoops. One went uh, AWOL. Let's see. Okay, so a five and a four. Oh, no. We got explosions, dude. Okay, so that's not good, but we'll get to that. Okay, so first of all, we have AA. Uh, ah, no, I should have used um, a little bit less AA because that means uh, two hits, we take down the next plane and the next guy coming has fire and all kinds of bad stuff, but we have a five inch gun. We shoot the uh, we shoot one hit on him, so there's only one leak and uh, normal debris remaining. Then we have fire. Fire is ignored, but then unfortunately we have two explosions. And like you know, uh, we get to choose where to put them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put them in the stern and the rudder. So the first explosion we're putting in the stern. And you know the explosions will spread to the rudder, but I'm gonna use one supply point. Since I have my guy here over at the rudder to prevent that from uh, spreading. And we're going to do the same with the next explosion. And again we're going to use one supply point uh, to um, absorb that damage. And that my friends leads us to the next turn. So, uh, not, they don't have so many planes left, so I think we're gonna win this. Uh, we're locking a one. And then I'm gonna roll the red d10. And next attack is gonna be on the left side. Hopefully not a one or a two, I was gonna say, but it is. Uh, so it's gonna be a two. Uh, so we have a leak, first of all. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the leak over here in the rudder. We're actually, now we're gonna put the leak over here in the magazine and ammunition. Since it likes to go down, we don't want it to, uh, to uh, can explode. So we go to the rudder and we put our normal damage pip over in the rudder. Okay, so we survived the attack. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and roll our d10 now. Let's see, where he attack? He attacked in, in number two, the rudder. Yeah, you have to remember to put out your um, penalty. So in, in the penalty, oh, we have this one. So this one is uh, interesting because it limits our um, clear skies ability, uh, getting the rudder hit. Uh, so basically you have to mark out two clear skies uh, cells as if they've been used. So, uh, two of them here in the bottom. You get to choose, but off, obviously we're going to use the one in the bottom or marked out. Uh, but that works with my plan because I was just going to fill out this last one and then be done with it. Whew. Okay, that was quite lucky I'd say. We have a one. We have two fives, a six, and two eights. Wait, was that a six? Ah, I'll re-roll it. Okay. Maybe I moved it with my hand. One more five, a zero. Come on, I don't want a zero. Ah, what's up with all the zeros, man? Haha, <laughs> that's kind of a, I made a joke without knowing it. Okay, so we have two bridge actions. Uh, let's see. We want to use one to turn into a wrench because we want to stop that leak. And then we are going to use one of them uh, for AA. Because we have two coming explosions, which we can do nothing about. All right, so our wrench uh, goes ahead and um, fixes that leak, turns it into debris, uh, the AA. 
does one hit to the next uh, plane coming and then we have the five inch gun and remember unfortunately this one with the two explosions we can't do anything because he has the five uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use it on the next one hitting uh, for free uh, <clears throat> damage points the six is ignored it's a glance but we have the explosion and I'm gonna go ahead and use the explosion in the radar. Uh, nope, that's not gonna work. Oh yeah, it can work. Okay, so we use it in the radar. So one pip and then one pip to all adjacent areas, which is the forward uh, fire room, the communications and the crew quarters. All right, so that's the end of that turn. We will not spread any leak or fires. And usually this is your enemy because it's gonna be so much fires and leak spreadings. When you're playing the harder difficulty levels, you're not gonna be able to constantly put them out uh, like I'm doing right now. Okay, so uh, we go to our next turn and it's gonna be oof, bad this turn. I'm gonna go ahead and did I lock a one? I think I locked a one. Ah, uh, yeah. Most probably did. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use the red D10. And then I am going to go ahead and use the AA guns, I think. Yeah, I'll use the AA guns, um, which is basically you are locking a four. Or I could use the radar. The radar is also good. Let's you reroll uh, one dice one final time. So I think I'm actually going to use uh, that action instead. It's a good safety uh, safety uh, feature. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And now it's time for the attack. It's going to be an explosion on the right side. Let's pray that it's not going to be uh, number eight here. Number nine, which is the bridge. Okay, so the bridge is not somewhere uh, where you want to go ahead and get attacked. Uh, the penalty for for the bridge is a little bit confusing, and I have uh, posted about it on uh, the Board Game Geeks uh, forum, but I haven't got a reply yet. I posted a few weeks ago, but basically, if you watch the rules, if we read the rules here for the penalty action. The penalty action is you may not mark out stars this round. And that's uh, that's the penalty action I'm going to use because that's the penalty action which we can see here in the book. You see the star with a uh, marked off thing here. Uh, that's the one we read in the book. But if we look at our uh, backside, which is basically the chart you will be using, uh, you may not use bridge action this round. So which one is it? Can you use bridge actions? Can you mark off stars? I'm gonna go with the rules, not with the backside, uh, which is you may not mark off stars this round. So that's that's the penalty I'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna be using. But just to let you know that there is some errata there, which I don't know uh, the correct answer to. Okay, so uh, that's the end of that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and roll. Or did we? No, we didn't do the damage yet. <laughs> the the bad part. But the bridge is okay. You can see it only has one adjacent area, which is the communications. So, one explosion dealt. One more here, and we're done. So our, our turn, hopefully, to get some payback. Ooh, I don't like those numbers. Uh, one. A free rest of them are pretty bad and we get to reroll oh, come on man this is not looking good for me one final reroll oh man that's not good okay so uh, we have two leagues right we're gonna go ahead and place these out and then we have a uh, fire but remember I did use this action which lets me reroll one only one die one final time even locked once oh 
Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me, dude. Man. Okay. So I got a <laughs> got a fire again. Anyway, bridge actions. Okay, what are we going to use here? Uh, we're going to go ahead and use them for Uh, perhaps the 5 inch gun I'm thinking okay so we're gonna use the 5 inch gun the wrenches are ignored the 5 inch gun we're gonna go ahead and target let's see these two planes okay and then we have leaks so unfortunately yeah the bridge is gonna receive one leak and the communication center is gonna uh, receive one leak and then we have a fire and the fire we're also gonna put in the communications center because if we put it in the bridge it's gonna explode and that's it okay so now this time we go to leak spreads because that is gonna happen so the leak spreads from the bridge to the communications uh okay or actually yeah that was stupid of me i could have used the communications to um to spread it through crew quarters because the communications is in, in is in bad shape but since i already started i'm gonna go ahead and complete it okay so the leak is done uh and then we also um have a fire and the fire is going to spread from the communications to the bridge so we are in a little bit of trouble now uh, and we only have one supply so i can only fix one of them but that is how it is okay so we uh, take these guys back okay so what happens now is something that only happens on the first two difficulty uh, levels of the game uh, and sign and the other one called the tenant so basically when you killed off all these other planes and only have these planes left with the shamrock you are going to go ahead and get some support so at the beginning of the turn in which all non shamrock um, uh, planes are destroyed you're gonna go ahead uh, and place the, the green cube you have a green cube or use the mini from the kickstarter and put it on any of the shamrock planes and uh, that uh, aircraft is going to be destroyed at the end of the turn so we're going to go ahead and use that on this one which has a five and a lot of explosions and at the end of that turn this this guy is going to help us eliminate that plane okay so we have an attack now but first we get to place out our guys and uh, yeah I, I definitely want to lock one of my d10s to a one and let's see and the communication center hmm yeah i'm gonna go in there too and that's where i'm gonna go ahead and spend the last supply point uh, repairing all of these Two active leaks and one fire. But I sure wish I had one more uh, point so I could also repair the bridge, but I can't. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead now and um, roll for the Japanese attacking on the right side with one explosive. Oh no! Okay, so he rolls for an explosion in the fuel tanks which spreads to the aft fire room to the crew quarters and to the forward fire room uh, the penalty is locking one of my d10 <clears throat> so not only do i lose a d10 but i have to lock it to an explosion that is horrible okay so uh, fortunately i do have the um, communications bonus which is using the red d10 so i am going to use that and uh, let's see, I have a two. I don't particularly want the fours now. Whoops, that was a three. Uh, I want the ones so I can uh, start using the five inch gun, but. Mm. Oh yeah, I forgot to, uh, to mark off his explosion. Yeah, okay. So 
I am gonna go ahead and use them anyway. And then we have another two. And I think I'm gonna just be happy with that one, I guess, because otherwise it could be a leak or something else. Just keep keeping this thing going and I don't want that. So the bridge action, the first time in this game, I'm gonna use that to mark off a star and we're gonna go ahead and mark off the clear skies. Uh, then we have two hoses and the first one I'm going to use to put out this fire. Uh, second one is wasted. The wrench I'm obviously going to use to fix the leak on the bridge. And then we have two AA. So the first one takes out this plane. And next one, next one damages this one. So it only has a damage pit remaining, so that's cool. But then unfortunately we do have the explosion. Again, we get to choose where to put the explosion. We're going to put it in the stern. Which then spreads to the rudder. So we have a lot of damage to our ships. But fortunately it's not very concentrated anywhere. Except the crew quarters and fuel tanks. So that is the end of that turn. And we go now to the next turn. And before we do so we also kill this one. Because we got some help from this guy. And the next one we're going to put him on is the last plane I guess. Which has... Quite a lot of uh, damage to do. Okay, so for the next turn, uh, we are gonna go ahead and use the red die, and then we're gonna use the reroll one uh, bonus. And uh, the attack is gonna be again on the right side, but just one normal pip of damage. That's not too bad. Uh, in place number six, um, let's see, six. Which is, where is 6? Ah, the communications. Oh man, look at that. The communications is taking lots of damage. One more pip and it's completely destroyed. Uh, and the penalty is uh, removing clear skies. And that's, uh, that's pretty bad for me. Because I was going to use the clear skies this turn. But nope. And I don't know what the rules would say basically. Here is a real uh, commandroom because I've used, I have uh, four marked here. So I, I, I could, I mean, it's, it's depending on how you uh, would interpret that this action starts. But I would say it starts as this has been rolled. Then I put that die over there and the next turn I, I will not roll that. So I, I will say that. The negative action happened before I could use the positive one, so therefore I say it's been wasted and uh, it's been marked up as used. Okay, so let's roll some dice. Uh, let's see what we want. We don't want sevens or uh, tens, but we definitely want some uh, fours and fives now, I feel like. Fours and fives. Okay, so the ones are always welcome. And the rest of the ones I'm just going to go with because I don't want damage uh, happening. One, seven, and eight. Let's see. Oh. Two and a six. Okay. I'm going to go with that. Okay, so the ones I'm going to turn into AA because I have no active leaks anywhere I believe the two which is the hose is not gonna let's see nope I have no active leaks or uh, fires so these are ignored but the AA we are most definitely gonna use uh, and let's see we already used uh, that have attacked so the AA which are three of them is gonna go ahead and take out the next plane He's dead. Uh, the glancing blows do nothing. Uh, phase 5 and 6 is ignored due to not having any, uh, any active leaks or fires. Uh, and that's the end of the turn. And at the end of the turn, this fella helps us to kill off the last plane. So that, my friends, means that we have survived. We have successfully won the game on Ensign level. 
uh, gotta say man I've been playing this a lot and this was actually uh, I took I usually don't take this much damage I was a little bit unlucky with my rolls uh, and again I want to point out that as you progress through the different uh, difficulty variations here uh, from ensign to lieutenant to commander to captain uh, it is gonna be much different you are gonna have to diversify your uh, your planning and you're not gonna be able to just spam um, the clear skies and and the captain uh, sorry the bridge action uh, so a very good game and I look forward to uh, doing this again uh, next time is gonna be the lieutenant level uh, very fine game uh, these minis just for your information they are Kickstarter exclusives and I would use uh, both of them there's two damage control teams but unfortunately uh, my other one was severely broken but I will get replacements uh, from the publisher uh, just waiting for those uh, well guys as always thank you very much for watching uh, please do subscribe helps me out a lot and helps you to stay tuned because the next video is coming soon and a lot more stuff so i'm going on a three day mountain hike but i'm gonna be back um, let's see i'm gonna be back uh, tuesday and i'm gonna do more videos so subscribe stay tuned and stay safe see you next time